Hey guys, today we're doing some offshore fishing once again. We're out here out of Boynton Beach Inlet and we are already kite fishing. That's the first thing we did as soon as we came out here this morning. And we are drifting. We've got our lines in the water with the kites. We've got two baits over here. And then off the back side of the boat where the kite is not, we have two lines in the water, one down, one up. We're using blue run live runners and live goggle eyes. And um, no bites yet, but we're out here, we're looking for the fish, so hopefully we get something nice today and looking for that sailfish too. We have reset our drift for kite fishing and instead of using two lines on the, on the uh, kite we decided to put out three and we're in a hundred feet of water drifting out and I just hooked a sailfish in the, uh, off our middle line over here, saw him jump and then he kind of went straight down. So now we just got to catch this fish. All right, we still got this sailfish on. He's just like a mile away. I'm about to run out of my spool here, and he is just running. And he did a jump, but his jump was so far away, I could barely see him. I mean, he's way the heck over there. I'm not really sure why I, I can't stop him, but um, he's just running, 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 running. And uh, we're stuck. We can't chase him because we got line kites out, lines out. We can't do nothing. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm in limbo here. This is like a monster sailfish. He didn't look that big, and now he's running again. All right, we're chasing down this sailfish a little bit. I got my kite out, so it's a little bit of a mess. Uh, we'll probably get a lot of tangles, but we're trying to get this fish. All right, still fighting this sailfish. We kind of gained some line on him. We still kept our kite line out and everything, but it seems to be working. I definitely got a lot of line back. Feel the fish, he's there, uh, but I still got a long way to go here. So we'll try to get him in as soon as possible. That way we can get the hook out and release the fish. All right, we've got our sailfish here. He ended up getting bill wrapped on the hook here. I haven't got it out yet, but I just grabbed him, just leadered him in. And uh, he's a nice fish, but we gotta get to let him go. We gotta let him go ASAP. We've been fighting him too long, he's exhausted. You can see his brown color. We're not gonna take him out of the water. So we're just gonna get the hook out and then we're gonna release him. So actually I need help with this. Uh, cut it? I, I can't get yeah. any help. Uh, All right, I got it, I got it, I got it. Hang on. Okay. Just got the hook out. He seems to be reviving pretty well. The bill, the uh, actual line in the hook wrapped around both of his bills so he couldn't like breathe. I think that's what happened. Um, so I'm just trying to get water back through his gills. You can see that I'm holding him into the current and just holding his, his um, mouth in the water so water goes through his gills and just revive him. And then as soon as I think he's ready and he starts kicking a little bit more, I'm going to let him go. Nice fish. Sailfish are so pretty. I'm sorry you didn't jump close to the boat for you guys to get some awesome aerial action, but um, next time we'll get a nice fish. They'll jump all over. Yeah, we, we, we were trying to revive that sail, so I didn't get too much footage. But uh, the thing, you know, the thing, the thing came in dead. It got, or mostly dead, or nearly, you know, in bad shape. You know, it got its, it got its bill wrapped around its mouth. I guess it was closed, and it came in real dark. And uh, we tried to revive it for a long time, and and it kind of swam off. I'm not sure how it's going to do. Uh, but you know, it's a good, good opportunity for me to review kind of the sailfish, you know, rules. Um, and, you know, I'm not an expert, but the gist of it is you're not really supposed to take them out of the water, okay? <laughs> conservation, all kind of conservation methods, and people say, you know, don't take them out of the water. Federally, you know, you're not supposed to take them out of the water. It's pretty clear. Uh, in state waters, you know, it's a little iffy, but really, you know, we just don't take them out of the water. You know, all those pictures you see with guys holding 
sailfish on the boat or in the boat, you know, those fish are all going to die. All right, so, um, you know, so that's a deal with that. So we don't post those pictures or take those pictures. Now, the caveat is you're allowed to keep a sailfish. You're allowed to keep one sailfish if you have a proper HMS permits, and, you know, and, and we do. Um, so we could have kept it, but, uh, you know, we didn't, or, you know, we, I've never kept one in my life. Um, but, you know, if they die when you're fishing for them, it's a good idea just to keep it and eat it. You know, it makes sense. I mean, there are a lot of them out there. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's the basic rules. You know, we, like, in summary, we don't like to see people holding a whole sandwich out of the water in the boat. You know, one of these glory shots. We, you know, just don't do it. Yeah, just don't do you it. You see that a lot on social media, Instagram, and Facebook. Like five people holding a monster sailfish inside the boat. The fish is super dark, and they say they released it and he swam away fine. But you know that no, fish did not live. They you didn't can't live. have five people touching a sailfish. Yeah. Well, it, you know, and different people have different opinions. But that's our opinion. You know, don't take him out of the water. Don't take that picture. But again, you know, nothing against the people that do keep them because it's totally illegal. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. They, and it's delicious smoked is what I hear. But uh, we're going to try and catch another one. It's really starting to blow out here, so we got to probably go in before too much longer. All right, well, we're kite fishing, obviously. <laughs> obviously, uh, We're going on a long drift and uh, just touching base. I want to mention a couple things we're doing a little different today. We talked about we only had two lines up yesterday on the kite. See, today we got three. All right, three lines. This is called the Trident. And these three lines, of course, go up to our kite. And uh, today we're using the AFCO kite, actually. It's a more of a standard type kite. And uh, I wanted to try it out. We had a lot of wind, and the, height was, the other kite was really, really high, which makes your lines going up to the kite and back down really, really long, which is not uh, exactly the greatest. Uh, Darcy liked the other kite better, so we'll probably switch to that one next time. We're going to fi uh, finish up this drift because Darcy has to get home and send out all those calendars and, and study for tests. And she has a seminar on Monday, a final next week, and we're going fishing for the next two days. So uh, we got to cut this trip a little short, right, Sizzle? Why is it like cutting a trip short? Like we went fishing, <laughs> we planned to fish until noon. It's noon. We're going in. So it's not my fault. Because I, we have stuff to do. We have lives. I'm busy. You know, this I is my, your life. I can't fish all day, every day. I love you guys. And this is my life. Ryan, I don't know what she does. Day. I'm fishing. We're hardcore fishing both days. Hardcore. Hardcore. Yeah, we gotta get out here. Yeah, now we're gonna be fishing the next two days. We have to That's wake for up bass. at 3 a.m. for, for bass. fish. Then we gotta wake up the next day for I use, 3 a.m. I use, for bass. I use bait that so, big. So, you know, I think I have a test. <laughs> so he's blaming all this on me. It's, no. Usually she's out at 6. I'm out here all night long till dark. No, we're done with our fishing trip. We talked about it last night. We're here till noon. And now he's saying we gotta cut it short. No, we're done. Fishing trip's over. We she's not really that into fishing. Fishing trip's she over. She likes to cut it short. Oh, here we go. Short trip. Here a little go. short trip today. She's not really I into it. I told you it was a short trip. <laughs> My God. This is like a micro trip. She's not really that in the fishing, guys. I, you know, I don't know. Can't catch a break. Her, she has no passion. We weren't even supposed to go fishing today. How's that? We're always and now we're to out here because that's the passion. We're, we're always supposed to go fishing today. It's, it, when next week is going to be blown out. It's blown out right now. It's freaking like five foot. Break it, out there. Break it, break it. I got to freaking over our baits. We got a war bird. <laughs> yeah, so about the weather, you know, it's blowing out of the northwest. Um, like really strong. So on a northwest wind over here, and uh, you know we don't, it comes offshore, so it's calm near shore. But man, I don't know. It's probably blowing 15 to 20, and when you start to get out to like 200 feet, which here is like a couple miles, I mean, man, it's, it's rough out there. We did a drift, the first drift out to 300, and it, it was at the, I don't know what it was. Was it was it four to six? Something like that. We're taking waves over the bow. We took a big wave over the bow. That's all, that's offshore fishing. I know you bass guys don't like that, but uh, when you're offshore, you take one over the bow. You take one over the bow. Uh, so we're going to take this drift out until it gets too rough for our little boat, which uh, is going to be not too much longer. We're at 184 right now, so we're going to take it out. And then we're going to wrap it up. All right, I got all the baits out now. You know, we, when we come out here offshore fishing and doing it, they got to buy baits, goggle eyes, for $80 for a dozen baits. So right now, so I'm using them up. We got three in the kite on the surface. I got two down on my kingfish rigs off the back, and I got one off the back on the on the uh, on the flat line. If you guys aren't familiar, you know the wind's going this way, so my kite's over here. So I got three baits falling over here, and the boat's going this way with the wind and the current. So I can also put baits that way. So those are my down baits and a flat line. So that's the gist of how you kite fish. You can also put up another kite. My boat's a little short for that. We've done it before, where you can have two kites out. With, you know that's six baits in the water, a whole bunch in the back. And you can really you can really put out a great presentation. But then the fish got a bite.
we just got back from fishing got done unloading the truck and uh, I want to show you guys two things one is I want to show you my new I mean, we're gonna be trying out this cam this cam you're looking at right here this is the GoPro chest mount you know I've been going back and forth about using one of these chest mounts I know the bass guys all use them it looked kind of dorky to me and we you know we want Darcy to be on camera not that we're in some chest mount but for me if you don't see me and I speak less maybe you guys like the videos a little more so tell me how you like this view if you want me to go fishing like this and uh, we'll see what happens I also but I also want to show you my new reel I just got on Amazon this is a uh, 13 inception now I heard this company was halfway decent and honestly I was just on um, Amazon looking at some different reels you know I didn't really care I don't know much about bass casters you know I'm a, not a, a bass guy so much but uh, so I got this left-handed one I'm gonna cast it like this and reel it like this and I think there's like the entry-level model it's gonna work out pretty good I want something that one we've been using is kind of like a almost like a Walmart special nothing wrong with that but it wasn't a quality reel and I'm gonna hook up into some salt, salt using this for salt water this one doesn't have much line capacity doesn't look like but maybe we'll get spooled that's fun right Coming out or no? Coming out with my new <laughs> chest cam. Sizzle, you're on a chest cam. Love it. Love it. If you don't love it. Love it. All right. It's time for my first cast with my new reel. I got my 13 Inception. And I push put on some new braid. You can see it here. I'm actually using this new tough line braid that brought out here to show you. Tough line super cast. I got 30 pounds. I probably would have put 20 on there, but I only had 30 that they gave me. See, like it's fully encapsulated. Uh, feels like mono. Performs like braid. So we'll see. All right. So I got this. Of course, I got a a gambler on a mustad worm hook. My go-to bait these days. I've already adjusted this this thing that goes down. It seems pretty good. I, li I like the knob. The knob works way better than my other rod. I can put it a little tight right now. In my first overhead cast. And uh, let's see what happens. All right, I'm starting to get a hang of it. I, I mean, I don't think this line is my favorite. But you know, I think the reel is probably just a decent reel and I'm used to throwing a piece of crap. So I guess, you know, you're supposed to keep your thumb on the spool the whole time, which I'm, I, you know, which works. You know, so now I'm getting it in a good spot. And the retrieval I really like, it's much faster. Um, this is what I'm used to. I know you guys all use different retrievals for different baits and stuff, but you know, I like to have a fast retrieval for the salt. Um, Well, that one I got on the top of a, a palm tree across the street. You see that palm tree? Right there. That's where it is. Oh my god. Darcy's trying to catch his peacock. How you doing, Sizzle? You missed it. How you like the chest cam? I like your chest cam. It's very awesome. I missed two fish. Two big blow ups on fish. You gotta talk loud because the audio sucks until I get a better audio system. We are gonna wrap up the video right here. Um, we're done with our offshore fishing day and then I had a bunch of work to do. I have to prepare for a test that I have, my last test ever, hopefully. My last test ever will be next week, so we had to come, home, come in early and study and whatnot. And we're also getting ready to go to Lake Okeechobee. We're going to be fishing for two days, bass fishing, looking for that 10 pounder on Lake Okeechobee. Super excited. I'm going to be fishing with um, Gambler Lures, the owner. Yep. And we're going to be staying at Roland Martin's Resort Place there in Clewiston. It's going to be awesome. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up for us. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't. New videos every single day. And until our next adventure, follow your dream and keep, and keep on, on catching. catching.